Trail of the Third Army and the 19th Tactical Air Command and the 8th Air Force is marked by more than 40,000 white crosses. 40,000 dead Americans. We were young and soldiers called to dedicate our lives In the name of God and country Do what's just, boys Go do what's right A hot band of brothers Waiting on our chance To add one more page unto the victory dance Here am I of the men who died for me Then I heard the voice of the Lord say Whom shall I send and who will go for us And I said Here am I Send me This is Michael Broder, Marine Corps veteran, actor, and Gallant View board member. You are listening to the new American veteran on Vets on Media. Now here's Carl Monger. How about I am muted? Hey, good afternoon. Today is June 4th, 2014. If this is the first time that you've listened to the show, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. The new American veteran, or TNAP for short, is dedicated to those who said, Here am I, send me. And we honor veterans, highlight those who have transitioned successfully, and identify areas and resources that help veterans leverage their military experience into successful and rewarding lives after the military. Gallifrey's goal, and I've changed this from the last time that I said it, because as I've gone back and looked at all of the information that we've been putting out, uh, we've, we've listed our goal, we've set our goal in a negative way, and, and I want to stop saying it in a negative way, I don't want to say it in a positive way. So here's the new goal. Gallifrey's goal is to connect every new veteran with a hometown veteran mentor. The purpose is to help every veteran achieve a smooth, peaceful, and successful transition, thereby preventing veteran unemployment, homelessness, and suicide. We do this by creating and supporting a nationwide network of successfully transitioned veterans that engage locally with new veterans with the same military background now going through transition. We also seek to motivate communities all over the nation to take responsibility for veterans returning, welcoming connecting and including not giving and I'm tacking that one on the end just because I want to say there is a perception out there that if you're a veteran and you're in a community that people should give stuff to you or if you're a community you feel like you have pressure to give stuff to veterans that is not what we're talking about at all what we're talking about is a culture of openness a culture of welcoming and a culture of connection to possibilities and opportunities and that is facilitated by veterans that are in that community that are just like the veterans transitioning home. We don't, as a veteran, we don't ask anybody to give us anything. We served because we believe that was something that we were called to do. We have felt honored to serve, and we're not asking for anything in return except proper medical care for those conditions that occurred while we were on active duty, and we expect that administrative stuff to be handled very, very proficiently and very expeditiously. And I've seen a number of things this last week, and I'm going to talk about this just a minute more here as I get a little further into the program. Um, you can uh, you can go on Social Security way faster than you can get your VA disability benefits. And when you think about it, somebody could come into this country um, and file for whatever governmental benefits they might be able to get, and they're going to get them maybe 10 times faster than a veteran who served their country and is now asking for proper care for those conditions that were incurred while in the service of that country. Something's messed up there, and we need to fix that. One of the things that I want you to remember is, uh, and I've said this a couple of times now, Gallant Few is everywhere because Gallant Few is where you are. Gallant Few can't exist without you out in the communities, without you veterans that have transitioned successfully, and without you non-veterans, you civilians, that have found other ways to serve than putting on the uniform, and that's by helping those who serve themselves. Um, the ways that you can do that, be a hometown mentor, participate in Run Ranger Run, set up a first Saturday this upcoming Saturday 
is the next first Saturday, nine o'clock in the morning in your hometown. Is there a group of veterans getting together for breakfast? If there is, join them. If there's not, start one. And uh, you can find more information at gallantview.org as to how that could happen. For those of you mentors that have been waiting out there for months and months and months, maybe a year, and I haven't connected you with anybody, that's because uh, we have more mentors nationwide than we have veterans that are coming into the network that are needing assistance. That is, on the one hand, a good thing, because when somebody lands in your hometown, I'm going to connect them with you as soon as possible. Uh, on the negative side, there's a lot of veterans coming back to those hometowns that are not connecting to our network. So we've got to get this message spread much, much broader than it is. Um, I, I might have a slide that I can show earlier. I posted it on Facebook last night that shows uh, the number of veterans that we have helped this year to date, first half of the year. And it's about 200 and 230, almost 240 veterans, if I remember right. And there's a mixture of every branch of the service to include the Navy and the Coast Guard. And uh, when you look at that, <clears throat> I think you'll be struck by the fact that we've had some uh, some peak demand times and then we've leveled back out. And I, as we do different events, more awareness goes out. People will come to us. There should be a constant stream and it shouldn't slack off. Excuse me. Uh, I also have two announcements. These are on the sobering side. Uh, Special Forces soldier killed in Afghanistan. Captain Jason Benjamin Jones, 29 years old of Pottsville, Pennsylvania, died June 2nd. 2014 of wounds received from small arms fire in Nangahar province, Afghanistan. He was assigned to Company C, 1st Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group, Airborne, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and was deployed for a second time in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Uh, he's also a ranger, had, a, had earned his ranger tab probably when he first went into the military. Um, also, I just learned that Sergeant Shaina, I hope I'm saying that right, Schmiegel, of the 82nd Airborne, died during a jump at Holland DZ Bragg this last Friday. You'll, you're hearing a lot of things on the news right now, and you're not hearing about those two soldiers that just gave their lives for our country. So would you please join me for a brief moment of silence? Let's pause while we uh, honor them. All right, uh, a couple more quick administrative announcements, and then you're going to hear from a World War II veteran. From now until the 5th of July, day after the 4th of July, anyone donating $20 or more will receive a memorial DVD. This DVD is called Battlefield to Remembrance. Uh, it was originally uh, published on the 60th anniversary of D-Day, and it's got video in here of uh, rangers going back to Normandy Beach to Pointe du Hoc and uh, the ceremony where President Clinton spoke. I mean, it's a fantastic DVD. It's got lots of historical stuff in there. That's free for anybody that donates $20 or more between now and the 5th of July. Someone that donates during that time period is going to get a free copy of this. I'm going to randomly select someone. This is an amazing book. I featured a, the author on the show last week. So if you want a free copy of that, Donate, and you'll get your, your chance to draw. It doesn't it, $20 or more. It doesn't have to be 20 It could be 2000 We take that. But $20 or more, uh, and everyone that does that during this month is going to receive that. I also have, sorry, I'm apologizing to the microphone. What's up with that? I also have a uh, half dozen copies of uh, Roads to Liberation, and this is uh, written about a prisoner of war, World War II, that was captured uh, Sicily, if I remember right. And it's got a lot of great historical information in here. Half a dozen of those, I'm going to randomly pick some people that donate during the next month, and they're going to get a copy of that as well. So uh, you'll find a, a way to donate on the blog that I publish after this that wraps up the show. And you can also go to gallantview.org, and you'll see a donate link right there so that you can, uh, you can send us a donation. Uh, 14th of June. Flag Day, Murphy, Texas, little community on the northeast side of Dallas Fort Worth complex. This little community is having a Flag Day ceremony, and they're inviting any and all veterans to come out and have breakfast, hang around for a Flag Day ceremony, last couple hours, and then we're gone. But come out there because we're this is part of our engaging local communities and having them take responsibility for transitioning veterans back into their community. Very excited about this. Uh, I've got to say something about uh, Sergeant Bergdahl. And that's it. I'm not going to say anything else about him. They're beating him to death in the media. Um, we, we should, we've always been a country of laws. We've always been a country that uh, presumes innocence before guilt. He may be guilty of sin, but let's not destroy him and his parents and everybody else on TV. It's, now it's at the ridiculous point. 
And, you know, the worst thing about that is what's happening now with the fix at the VA. So Secretary Shinseki is out, and we have a replacement in who's an Army Ranger veteran, West Pointer, used to run the USO. But are we talking about, is it in the news? I mean, that problem affects a lot of veterans, a lot of veterans. The veterans are dying because that care is being, being prohibited or barred from them being able to get it. So let's put the focus back on the VA. Let's let the military shake out the court martial or, or investigation or whatever they do at Bergdahl. And uh, there's a veteran rights movement that's getting ready to start. I'm going to try and get Boone Cutler on the show as soon as I can because I want to uh, have him talk about what he's doing with the, the veteran rights movement. And um, that's something that you're probably going to want to get involved in as well. All right. And I said you are going to hear from a World War II veteran, so listen up. I'm delighted to extend my greetings to all the veterans out there. I'm uh, Jim Magellis, a uh, World War II veteran, uh, just celebrated his 97th birthday, and uh, we're honoring veterans today. And so I, I extend my, my gratitude, my thanks to all of you, and tell you that uh, be proud to be an American, and, and be proud to be in the U.S. Army, because we've done a lot of great things for a lot of people. And I think we, we have very much to look, for, look back upon the things that we've done. And so I'm pleased to extend my gratitude and thanks to everybody. I got a chance to uh, meet him at uh, an AUSA function here last month, and he was kind enough to record that. All right, I'm getting ready to bring on my first guest, Patrick Kilpatrick. Let me uh, see if I can make the magic happen here on the screen, and I will unmute him. And Patrick, I do not have my own uh, camera guy. I'm operating a soundboard. I'm operating everything. So did you make it through? Are you there? I'm here, and you're doing it ably as well. I'm <laughs> privileged to be with you. Well, thank you for making it here on the show. I, I uh, looked you up on, and I've done this before. I've read your bio online at IMDb, and uh, but I've never heard it said quite like this, as rugged as he is genteel. I think it has its theme. What's that? Huh? I, I was saying uh, I looked you up I on. I said, I'm... remember, nothing is that you see in Hollywood. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I've got a lot of friends out there, though. Hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to be able to trust the things that they say. But um, six foot two, 220 no, pounds. A... <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a very great network of people who are devoted to the things that you're talking about. And I want to applaud you for what you're doing. And always have done there haven't been a lot of vocal people about it some shameful set of circumstances but um perhaps that climate is changing well you know one of the things that i've seen is uh there's a lot and maybe it's to be expected from folks that their living primarily is acting um they're really good at doing videos and and public service announcements and maybe a little bit less good about putting what we call deeds, not words, into their everyday life. Now you, and you've kind of jumped me right past a little introduction that I was going to do because you have a phenomenal film and TV background, and you, I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to let you tell us the story about your grandfather and his participation early on in the in the Navy. Uh, it was my father, actually. Oh, I'm sorry, your father. Uh, you look way too young father, for it to be uh, your, your father. Yeah, no, uh, uh, Robert Donald Kilpatrick uh, Sr. Um, was a early UDT manifestation. They were called beach jumpers in World War II. And um, that is sort of the genesis of my pre, uh, pro-military and pro-veteran um, predisposition, if you will. And he uh, got a silver star and a purple heart at either I Okinawa or Iwo Jima. I've never really been able to discern which one, even though I've read all the action reports. But, you know, he was a wonderful, extraordinary man, very gentle and, and very accomplished. And so I, I revere him, separate and apart from the fact that he was my father. So, um, so I came to Hollywood revering that and, and um, you know, found it unconscionable that Hollywood was c conducting itself in what I consider to be a shameful manner throughout the Vietnam period and uh, on through the last two wars. Remind me later on, Patrick, because um, I'll help you. If you don't have a copy of your 
father's service record, uh, I can help you maybe obtain a copy of that. So you might be able to even get a copy of the citation if you don't have that. So you'll know exactly where he earned that silver star. That would be great. I believe it was Okinawa because I believe that's what he told me. But um, uh, thank you very much. That would be great. Um, my way of honoring that period is we've, we've developed a big film about that period um, as one of the film company projects here. And perhaps a very high aspiration that I have in the entertainment business is to get that one. I think so, so much of what we deal with today is people are missing true heroes in art and media. And, and in fact, um, a lot of our, our stuff is not leading people to their better selves. And, and that may be one of the fundamental culture. You know, I, I think if you look at, and we're talking pretty far afield um, from what you do right now, but not really. If you look at the Iraq and Afghan period, we have uh, not a lot of our top directors and top production people dealing with the actual heroic elements that are uh, ever present on a daily basis in uh, veterans and military people. Um, I, and I, that I think is unconscionable on the part of the artistic community here in Hollywood. Um, I, you know, you don't want to put the emphasis on the negative, but if you look at Iraq and Afghanistan, there's not one single Hollywood person who participated as an active service person. If you look at World War II, you see dozens and dozens of major, major Hollywood people who went and served and uh, potentially gave up uh, their lives and their careers, certainly put their careers on hold in order to go and be the gallant few, uh, as it were. So um, that, I think, is an indictment of Hollywood. Um, and something that they need to be looking at themselves. Now, there's some wonderful producers, Spielberg and Bruckheimer. I think uh, their their sensibilities, uh, Peter Berg, Mark Wahlberg, and there, there's a number of people that have their sensibilities, I think, in the right place. But as a whole, the actor community and everything has been, ah, we've got something you're showing on there. Yeah, I thought, so, uh, I thought I'd start flipping through some of your pictures, but continue with your story, and then we can come back and talk about some of the photos. And, and I've got the clip, the movie clip that you sent me, the world premiere. I've never done a world premiere before, so I'm excited about being able to show that. Well, um, I'll put it in this way. When we have our best directors like Clint Eastwood, and we get the best that we get involved in two wars is flags from our fathers, which purports to All right. Well, it played. Uh, I'm not sure if you were able to see anything or not, but uh, I could tell that it was the sound was coming through. So let me get bring you back up here so that uh, we can see you. There we go. Were you able to hear it at least? Not fully, but it's uh, I don't know whether what your audience is getting or not. Um, well, I'm I'm going to learn too know. because the the thing is. Uh, it's going to be available online, so we'll be able to see it.
I'm not sure if you're able to see anything or not, but uh, I could tell that it was the sound was coming through. So let me get bring you back up here so that uh, we can see you. There we go. Were you able to hear it at least? Not fully, but it's. Uh, I don't know whether what your audience is getting or not. Um, well, I'm I'm going to learn too know. because the the thing is, uh, it's going to be available online, so we'll be able to see it. Ah, good. There we go. Well, I there's your picture. Now I'm fully engaged. I'm. Uh, I, I what you just showed was a in a sense it should be set up by saying that that is a sponsor promotion on um, somewhat of the conceptual basis of one of our new films, but it's which has to do with liberty and the responsibility of freedom. And it's a reimagining of history as if Hitler had won. And now the um, international resistance is, movement, is rising up against the all-encompassing totalitarianism. That's the basis of the story. But it, it has to do also with servicing uh, our many, many wonderful sponsors who allow us to do the work that we do. And so that's something to sort of give an audience a little tweak of what the story is about, but also to honor the, the sponsors who, um, who, who go along on the ride with us. Now, you have a plan to uh, involve a lot of veterans in your film company. Can you talk about that? Um, for that particular, we always have, it's been in our business plan from the very beginning um, to utilize veterans and uh, wounded warriors as much as possible in front and behind the camera. And that has a genesis with, um, I broke my back when I was 17 and couldn't play sports for many, many years. So I became a writer and I also got into rehabilitative medicine and for myself in order to become an actor. And so, in a sense, the breaking of the back became a blessing that was sending me on my purpose in life. And so, when I had gone to places like Brook Army Medical Center and, and um, met wounded warriors, they were happy enough for me just to be there, to be present, to sign an autograph or something. But for me, what I really wanted to do was provide veterans with pivotal experiences that ultimately perhaps they could look at their wounding situation and, and, and be con not just content, but consider their wounding a pivotal life event that was sending them on their final purpose. So if I could provide an environment in the movies and, and, and uh, media and television events in which veterans would go, if I had not had that cataclysmic event, I would not be here. Uh, not just with Patrick Kilpatrick, but be, be in this place in my life journey, and they could look back on it and say, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. Now, that's a difficult journey sometimes if someone has lost mul multiple limbs or their facial features or whatever. But there are extraordinary wounded warriors, as you well know, who have gone on to minister their brethren or to become entertainers or comedians and, and great inspiration seekers. And those wounds that they suffered in Vietnam or whatever conflict were the pivotal experiences of their life. So if, if Unlog Films, my company, can be that kind of a catalyst, then um, I'm fulfilling perhaps the highest aspiration of our films and television shows. And we have other aspirations to change the culture and to lead people to their better selves, which is what I think art and novels, painting, movies should be doing all along. And they many times in their history have been. If we have a cultural problem, it's right now that we have some media that are devoted to revering aberrant behavior rather, rather than leading us to our better self. If a veteran wants to participate in that, how do they do that? How do they find you and get connected with you? They can certainly, I'm very accessible. They can call me, uh, they, can, uh, they can email me at Kilpatrick203 at gmail.com. Kilpatrick203 at gmail.com. Um, so they can go to ActiveShooterMovie.com, which is currently an Indiegogo campaign. They go to ActiveShooterMovie.com. Our contact and everything is there. They can go to Active Shooter Facebook. They can go to Patrick Kilpatrick Facebook. 
they can go to the real Patrick Kilpatrick, R-E-E-L, uh, and, and contact me. Better to go to my personal Facebook, which is Patrick Kilpatrick. Uh, sometimes I'm so busy, I, I, I'm not able to check some of those sites, but I'm pretty accessible. And we're, we're looking for um, wounded warriors and veterans who want to participate in that. Now, it takes a special wounded warrior who wants to be put forth in those kind of things. But I assure you, we're not there to exploit. We're there to, yes, dramatically elevate the visual tapestry of the films, but we're also looking to provide those pivotal experiences to wounded warriors and veterans. So um, anytime I can provide employment, anytime I can provide uh, a wonderful, extraordinary life experience for veterans and wounded warriors. I'm happy as a clam to do so. Tell me what's on the horizon for you as you see uh, your movie coming out and your Indiegogo campaign. Where do you, where do you see? We have a little more time because if my other guest is not lined up to come on the show yet, he probably thinks I wasn't able to get back online. But tell me a little bit about what's in the future for you. Well, tonight, uh, tonight at the Mayflower House in North Hollywood, I'm speaking to the L.A. Republican meeting, um, and the topic of the speech is the Libertine Patriot, how to joyfully and skillfully unite Americans in an age of partisan disillusionment. Um, we try to have fun. Um, we are going to drive our Indiegogo campaign for Active Shooter. Every day is pre-production for G. Uh, the movie that has to do with the reimaginings of, uh, and Hitler having won and, and freedom-loving people rising against that very slick and overpowering totalitarian force. Um, you know, we're fully engaged at Uncommon Dialogue Films, both politically and uh, charitably and uh, cinematically, and we've got, uh, we have pitchings we do. I'm a little leery of the pitch process in Hollywood because I call it the culture of theft. So this is uh, my journey has been to do everything myself, just as yours has been in a certain way. So we're very much into setting up our operation and being supported by uh, our own people because there are a lot of people in Hollywood who rather than wanting to collaborate with you, they want to simply uh, institutionally steal from you. and. I believe that that needs to be countered by the independent-minded. Um, when somebody comes to me with an idea, we collaborate with them and make them an instrumental part of the organization and the process. That's not necessarily the way some of the larger institutions function here. So um, uh, my whole impetus for the future is um, cleaving uh, people who believe as I do to me and persuading those people who don't that we are on a right and worthy path. I, you know, the thing is, I think it's a time, here's the future, it's a time for Americans not to be divided. It's a time for Americans to be united. It's a time for us to take authentic leaders from both parties, and people who get things done and who are, are authentic. And that's really what we're about, being as authentic as we possibly can, serving. It's about service, as you well know, Carl. It's service to wounded warriors. It's service to a story. It's service to a larger vision of, of America. It's service to the world. It's service to your children. It's service to your spouse or your partner, or not, a, a, as you choose. But, you know, those are the things that define us as human beings. And so what we want to make sure that we're doing the very, very best thing that we can with humor and, and, and wit and everything else that we can huge huge part that you said there the, huge huh? part that huge part that you said there is as you choose because it's your own choice whether or not you're going to get out and do those kinds of things but the rewards that come back to you are far far in excess of the effort that you put into it well i think you know what is it uh, teddy roosevelt said the harder i work the luckier i get um I think well, as Americans, we need to speak out and bring whatever we bring to the table. Thank the Lord we live in a culture where you're allowed to do that, IRS notwithstanding in recent uh, days. But um, by the way, I want to say on an individual basis, I've found many IRS people to be really great people. It's only when these institutions begin to um, 
to expand beyond, which by the way is the nature of institutions, that they need to be countered by the uh, free and um, exercise of the rights of the people. So, um, you know, it's a wonderful, glorious life. The bottom line is you can all be simultaneously grateful and simultaneously diligently opposed to something that's, that's um, not following along the righteous path. Sure. And we need to all work to make the world a better place. And ultimately, love is the only thing that we have for each other. So that's basically it. To do, do it with a laugh, too. I mean, the world of films is Will Ferrell, and it's also Spartacus. It's Serpico, and it's, you know, it's all those wonderful things. And there's a place for all those films, just like there's a place for all those people in America. So what's the future hold? I try to make every email as as perfect as possible. We take one step at a time and do whatever we do in the best way possible. Well, I sure appreciate we may, You know, public office is a possibility on a personal level in 2016. Um, wherever I can best serve is the best way to do it and not lose my humanity or my joyfulness for life. You can forego that for a certain amount of time just to get things excellently done. But that's not really a, a way to live your life. You need to balance the enjoyment of life with the accomplishments or whatever you get done. Patrick, I appreciate being on the show today. Thanks for uh, the service of your dad and for everything that you're doing on behalf of veterans. You know, we didn't get a chance to, and I'd like you to talk about that real quick here uh, before you get off the line, but the, how you originally had an intention of follow-in service like your dad but you had uh, an accident, broke your back, and you weren't able to do that for many years. And then when you recovered, you were able to start getting back into the I wasn't action. able to. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. I, I arrived at acting with a wonderful uh, combination, which is a mind of a writer and the body of an athlete again. But, um, you know, when 9-11 happened, I tried to enlist in the Marines. Um, they laughed at me because I was 53 years old. But I was able to get over there and get to Afghanistan and, and uh, and meet as many troops as I could in 2005, and it was a great privilege. That's the thing, you know, I mean, meeting people like that on a daily basis, I get so much out of it, much more so than I, I give. Um, so um, I think that's answering your question. I, uh, you know, it's just story, great storytelling um, to utilize veterans. The best year of our lives was the best picture uh, after World War II, and we want we aim for those kind of things, and we want to utilize wounded warriors in the same way. And uh, I count everybody from special operations to the, the, all four branches of the military, five branches of the military as friends. I want to say thank you to our great list of sponsors, which includes Fabulous American and some international co uh, companies, all of which can be seen in that promo that I uh, showed you. And uh, they're great people, and, and that entrepreneurial spirit of those companies is extraordinary, and we want to support great American and international companies that have uh, extraordinary products and also have wonderful, good um, impulses towards humanity. So, you know, if I talk to a group of hunters, then I say they need to make sure that they are against factory farming and cradle-to-grave cruelty. If I'm speaking to Republicans tonight, then um, uh, they need to understand that they need to be a party of the vanguard. They need to be a party of vision just as much as a party that has good impulses about defense and good impulses about fiscal economics and those kind of things. The same holds true of the Democrats. Democrats need to separate themselves from bloated and perhaps uh, un-American union uh, involvement. You know, we all need to get better and we all need to function as Americans. So I hope that I'll be able to serve uh, veterans as they come forward. And thank you for letting me speak. Patrick, thank you so much for being on the show. When I convert this over to the blog talk section, I'll be able to cut out all that dead space in the middle and I will have photographs, your images that you sent me, they'll rotate through. So we will get that stuff out, and uh, and I'll publish a blog that'll have a link so that people can see the world premiere as it should be seen and not uh, not not seen. 
that makes sense. It's a world premiere conceptually. It's not a world premiere film. Also, those pictures that you have and stuff, they may, may need some explanation, but I'm sure it's all good. <laughs> well, thank it's you very much, good. Patrick. Thank you again for what you do, Carl. All right. And I've always loved Gallant View and, and what you're doing. So if I can help you out in any way, please let me know. I sure appreciate your support. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Have right. a great day. Thank you, Patrick. I didn't say Thomas. I didn't say namaste. Namaste. So <laughs> onward and upward. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> I absolutely love there. having him on the show. It's um, We've had the opportunity to uh, participate in some of his events out in L.A. And just a fantastic guy. Uh, great supporter. Great supporter of veterans. And I'm really... Sorry that the broadcast didn't work like it was supposed to work earlier. And what I think I'll do is I'll get back with Patrick and here in a week or two, we'll see if we can't redo the segment and uh, so we can actually represent the things that he wanted to represent. I'm also trading messages here with Ryan Brodovich because he's the next guest uh, to come online and he is not seeing the invite. So it looks like technical difficulties are going to be the theme of the show today. So, gosh, I apologize for that because we're starting to pick up more and more viewers. And um, when you do a show that doesn't come off quite right, that can that can turn somebody off from watching. So those of you, like I said at the beginning, if you joined us here for the first time, apologies for the way that this broadcast is going. We can't help the technical difficulties, uh, but we'll have to figure out uh, an easier way to get people connected through the Google Hangout part. And then finally, I want to do an update with um, Leonidas and Marty, the nomadic veterans, and uh, and neither one of them is showing uh, that they are hanging in here on the line for me to talk to as well. So it looks like it's just me. And I'm not going to do any dances or any uh, fancy things around here because that would just uh, probably turn everybody off. But I am going to try one more time. If Ryan is still hanging on out there, I'm going to see if I can put on um, something for everybody to listen to here for a moment. And I'm going to see if I can get Ryan uh, connected. I may have to go offline to do this here. So let me pull something up here real quick. And I've got a couple of neat files, uh, one of which is uh, a song by a country music gal that, uh, okay, I see that Ryan is here. Good. You just stand by right there because once I get this uh, backup thing running, then I'm going to uh, maybe grab my cell phone, give you a call, and see if we can bring you on here. So let me, let's see. How about, uh, we, we've played this before, but it's extremely important for you to hear this. This is Boone Cutler talking about the uh, Spartan Pledge. The Spartan Pledge kind of looks like this, and then I'll give you the rundown of how it got started and, and how popular it's become. Not really popular, just... Uh, Effective. I will not take my own life by my own hand until I talk to my battle buddy first. My mission is to find a mission to help my warfighter family. That's the Spartan Pledge. It's nothing you have to memorize verbatim, but just get the, the gist of it. And that is, we don't kill ourselves until we talk to our battle buddy. And our mission in life is to have a mission that helps our warfighter family. About three years ago, when it started, it started between two guys, myself and my battle buddy, Nacho. We were in Iraq together, and we had lost, we'd lost touch with each other. He called me one night when he was upset because a friend of his had committed suicide. Now, this guy, if I'm not mistaken, was a police officer at the time, but he was also a warfighter. He was a veteran. And that brought up the subject of suicide between us. And we realized that both of us, had spent a lot of time thinking about suicide but not talking about it. And with the suicide rate in America being what it is today with warfighters, it's something that is a definite, relevant subject. Since then, I've taken that pledge with other warfighters, more than I can honestly remember. And now not too many people take that pledge with me because they've gone on to take that pledge with other guys, and it's just permeated throughout the, the community. Every guy I know that I took that pledge with has taken it with several other guys. It's been put on uh, posters on Facebook and, and all over the place. And in my opinion, nobody owns it. We all own it. We all own a piece of it. We all have a piece of that. The, the Spartan Pledge. Because it's something that means something. 
because we don't trust the doctors. We don't even trust our family members, but we trust our battle buddies. So take that pledge with your battle buddy. And remember, if someone takes that pledge with you, that means you're taking them. Me, I'd have to call and contact a lot of people if I was going to off myself. And I would, because I took a pledge. That's the descendants of Sparta. That's what it's all about. That's what the Spartan pledge is. If we can just do that, we don't need all the other stuff. We take care of ourselves, we take care of our own, and we maintain a mission focus. The Spartan Pledge. That's where it comes from, and you decide where it goes. Contact a battle buddy. Talk to him. Find out that what you realize and what you think is reality is not necessarily reality. We all are going through the same thing in silence. You don't have to sign a paper. You don't have to make a dedication online. It's just a phone call between two guys, two warfighters, male or female. doesn't matter. I will not take my own life by my own hand until I talk to my battle buddy first. My mission is to find a mission to help my warfighter family. All the way. Make it happen. All right, that was the Jim O'Farrell band that you were just listening to there. It's not easy being a cowboy Well, you want to talk about a show that has been plagued with errors. This is one. So uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to play I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it just to see if it happens because I'm not going to be able to bring my other guests on right now because it's just not working. Um, but I am recording this, so I should be able to edit out the bad spots and get the doggone thing uploaded to Block Talk Radio so that people can still hear. Uh, it, it is incredibly important that we let veterans out there know that other veterans just like them that have experienced nearly the same identical thing are... Um, able to take their military experience, they're able to overcome things that are difficulties, and they're able to be successful, like Ryan Brodovich, who's, who I, I'm going to bring on here because he has a, a, a business that has been very successful, but he's been so successful that now he has people that have, he has worked with before they reach back out to him because they've done a remodel on their house maybe, and the contractor has been less than ethical in the practice. So now he is is uh, training people and he has some materials to help you if you're building a home or if you're remodeling a home. And that's what we want to talk about. We want to bring him on and we want to go through that. Uh, now, as always, I end the show by playing taps. And I have to say a little disclaimer at the end because YouTube thinks that I'm stealing somebody's recording of taps, even though I secured an open source recording. So that's why I have to say the announcement at the end. But um, thank you for being here. God bless the United States military, those men and women that stand ready in the night, those rough men and women that stand ready in the night to visit violence on those who would do us harm. And uh, may God especially bless and protect my regiment, 75th Ranger Regiment. That beautiful rendition of TAPS is a public domain recording created by a soldier or employee of the United States Army and as such is not eligible for copyright protection in the United States. Kenny Thomas' song Send Me is used by permission of Kenny Thomas. All other work or recording is original work or used by permission. This has been a presentation of Gallant Fuse, the new American veteran on the Vets on Media Global Network.